Hi, I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Molly. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Hi, I'm Molly, and we're interviewing a former student of St Cuthbert's, Jess Alford. What was your experience like at St Cuthbert's? Um, my experience at St Cuthbert's um, was fantastic. Um, it, it was a great school back then, and it still is, still is today. Um, I made some fantastic friends, and um, some of them I'm still in touch with. All the teachers were brilliant as well. Um, it prepared me um, wonderfully for, for what I'm doing now and for, for all my education um, after St Cuthbert's as well. So it was it was brilliant five years. Who's your inspiration? Um, it's a difficult question to answer because um, I don't think there was one person that made me want to be a doctor. It was just something that I always wanted to do with myself for various reasons. So there wasn't one particular person, but at various points in my life there have been people that... Um, I've looked up to and um, wanted to be like. Um, so at school there were a few people. Um, the main one was probably Miss Scalamore because um, she was just fantastic. Anyone that knew her um, would say what a character she was. Um, even though she was such an important person, um, she was just she made time for you. Um, even though she was so busy, she was had loads of responsibilities, but she always took the time to get to know you and talk to you. And I just think, um, as a doctor in the future, I'm going to have a lot of um, responsibility and be in a position of power. And if I could be as down to earth as she was, then you know I think I'd do a pretty good job. So she was the main inspiration. Um, and then sort of various doctors that I've worked with in the hospitals, um, they're all inspiring, um, particularly some of the junior doctors, the ones that go out of the way for patients, stay behind, um, just, yeah, just... They're just wonderful people and they really inspire me to, to you know, carry on and, and be the best doctor I can be. What was your best experience of being in university so far? Um, just the whole experience of uni is, um, is brilliant. There's, it's, I've met so many wonderful people and um, friends for life and um, just got to do so many wonderful things. But in terms of um, day-to-day basis, just working with you know, doctors consultants, the top doctors in their field, some of them are world renowned. And um, so just being able to work with them and be taught by them is just is fantastic. And as a student it's sometimes it, when you <coughs> look back and think, oh I've actually done that and I'm only a medical student, so it's, that's probably the best. Did anything in particular inspire you to do medicine? Um like I said earlier, it's mainly it was mainly just sort of a few experiences really. Um, I've always enjoyed science and I always liked talking to people and getting to know people um, and obviously medicine combines both of them um, and then I did some work experience in um, an elderly person's home and also in Warrington Hospital and with a GP as well so I did about um, three weeks work experience and then some voluntary work at um, another care home and also a homeless person shelter um, and all those things just made me want to help people and give something back so they were my main main inspirations. What fields are you wanting to work in? Um, I'm undecided at the moment exactly what I want to do but um, the two placements that I enjoyed most were obstetrics and gynaecology which is um, pregnant women and um, women's health and babies as well um, and paediatrics is child's, children's health. Um, so they're the, the two areas that I think I'd like to go into. Um. Does your daily routine ever get boring? It definitely doesn't get boring because every day is usually different. Um, so usually I'm, I'll be in uni, well in the hospital for about eight, half eight in the morning and then we meet up with the doctors and we do a ward round. So we go around to each person's bed and review what's gone on with them and have a bit of a conversation with them. And then after that um, we might go and speak to a couple of patients ourselves, take some histories from them, find out what's been going on. Um, examine them and then we'll go back and speak to the doctors Then we might have about an hour of teaching with the doctors and then we usually have a lunch break and then in the afternoon it'll be a clinic or um, more teaching just it's different every day so it's such a busy day is it hard to keep a healthy lifestyle um yeah it can be long days and it can be pretty difficult when you get home in the evening you know to cook a healthy meal or do some exercise, particularly if you're, if you're tired. But I do try and make a conscious effort to do that. Um, I do go to the gym and I do a lot of swimming as well because I used to do something nice swimming, so I try to keep up with that as much as I can. Which units in the NHS would you say is the best to work in? Um, 
Well, I can only talk from my experiences, but the best, I think the best unit that I've worked in was the paediatric unit, um, which, as I said before, um, looks after all the children. Um, just the staff are just so friendly, and as a student, you really appreciate that because, you know, we're going from ward to ward, and it's nice to be welcomed. And um, just the way the doctors are with the children, they're just fantastic, and, you know, like a lot of my role models are um, the paediatric staff. And it's just a great atmosphere, and it can be sad at times with um, the children that are sick, but it's really nice when you know you see them going home with their families and things. That's really nice. How did life at Saint Cuthbert pay for your life at university? Um, it prepared me really well, um, in a lot of different ways. I mean, you're growing up when you're at school, and I wouldn't be the same person I am today if I hadn't been at this school. Um, so I've got a lot to thank this school for. Um. And just, there are a few specific things as well. So I was um, head girl, um, I was lucky enough to be head girl at, at school. And that taught me a lot about um, independence and responsibility and how to handle that, um, how to manage my time, um, and how to be a leader and a role model, and how to work as part of a team. And as a doctor, I need to be able to um, work as a team because you're constantly in a team. And sometimes I might need to lead that team. And obviously with um, uni work, got a lot of responsibility and um, a lot of deadlines to meet so all those skills I learned from being her girl have transferred really well to uni and also the interview process that we had to do to be on the senior team that prepared me really well for the interviews for uni and it also gave me some extra um, to talk about when they asked me what I'd done at school and things. What's the most rewarding part of your job? Um, it's rewarding every day to be honest and um, just you can see the impact that you have, just, even though it's a small impact on patients' care. So um, just talking to a patient, and we can be a bit of a hindrance sometimes because they don't have to talk to us about why they're in hospital. Um, but it's nice at the end when they say, thank you for talking to me, and you know it's been nice because they're in, in a hospital and they're on, on their own and they might not have many visitors. So it's just nice to be able to um, engage with them and um, see that they're finding it useful. And also just... If you've seen a patient once and then you see them again and they're better and then you see them when they're going home, it's nice to be able to follow through with their care and, and see how, how much the doctors have helped them and the small part that you've played as well. Are there any top tips you can give us to stay healthy? Um, I mean, this is probably all stuff that you already know, but um, I know we say this to um, the patients all the time. Um, so just regular exercise, um, healthy diet, <coughs> and drink plenty of water. Um, five portions of fruit and veg a day at least and just look after yourself because it's easy to get caught up with, with life and not really look after look after yourself and I know I can be guilty of that sometimes um, so yeah, um, just do all those things really uh, I've got a question if a parent gives birth to a child, does the child stay with the parent or, go, or goes on to the children's ward? So there's children's wards, there's adults' wards, and there's also maternity wards or delivery suites. So when a woman comes in to have a baby, she'll go on to the delivery suite and she'll have a baby and then she can go to the maternity ward with the baby as well. Um, but it's a good question. <laughs> what subjects did you have to do to get onto your course in university? Um, so at A-level, you have to do chemistry and then usually two other sciences. So I did biology and I did psychology because that counts as science as well. Um, a lot of people think that you need to do maths to um, be a doctor, but you don't actually need to do it. And Although I was alright at maths, I never really enjoyed it as much as other subjects, so I chose not to do it. And then I also did English um, literature at AS as well, because that was another passion that I had as well. And so I did those, and then in terms of um, GCSEs, you just needed all your sciences and English and maths um, above grade B, I think. Which teachers did you like the best? Um, so there are a few. Um, first, Mr McCauley was probably um, my favourite teacher. And um, I always say he was probably more like a friend than a teacher in some respects. Um, I could always go to him if I had something I needed to talk to him about, if I had any problems. And um, you could always count on him to just cheer you up because he is really <laughs> funny. And his lessons were always very entertaining, to say the least. Um, Mr Gibbons, um, my English teacher just because he made me realise that I did have a talent for English and uh, made me want to do it at AS, even though I wasn't te really going to use it in my future in my future life. It was just something that I enjoyed. 
and then Mrs Hunter as well, who was my chemistry teacher, because I was in one of the, I was the first year to do chemistry as a separate um, subject, so we did triple science, which obviously really helped me then um, for A-level and getting into uni, Um, because she just made chemistry seem easy, so we'd all sit there at the start of the lesson and not have a clue what she was talking about, and then by the end, you know, we'd all be able to do it and be able to teach each other, so she was just a fantastic teacher, and she was the one that I first sort of told that I wanted to do medicine and the first one that said to me well look you can do it you just got to like believe that you can so those three were my main what's the most creative thing you've done in science um I can't I can't really particularly remember um science in school specific things that we did but um this I just I do a lot of crazy things in in uni um in the hospital so, like being able to assist in operations, um, you know, as a student, that's just amazing to be able to do that. Um, being able to sew people up at the end of the operations, stuff like that. It's it's mad that we can do that, but I really enjoy it. And although I'm not I'm not particularly wanting to be a surgeon, I'll, things like obstetrics and gynaecology involves bits of surgery. Um, so you know, all these experiences are really good. Um. What are you hoping to achieve for your life? Um, so, right now I'm in my fourth year at um, medical school, so I've got another about <coughs> six to eight months before I um, do my final exams. Um, and then after that I've got two years foundation training, so I'll apply in October, and I'd like to work at um, Royal Liverpool Hospital if I can get there. So I'll do two years training, then I'll decide what I want to specialise in. So at the moment, either Robs and Guy or Peds. And then after that, just work my way up to hopefully be a consultant one day. Do you have an opportunity to go around the world? Um, yes, I do. So after my final exams um, in January, I'll go to Blackburn for a placement for about two months. And then after that, um, I've got the opportunity to do what we call an elective period. So it's a chance to go anywhere in the world and see what the healthcare is like there and have a chance to work in that um, healthcare system and also explore um, the country as well. Um, so I've chosen to go to Barbados and St Lucia in the Caribbean um, and work at two hospitals there, hopefully doing four weeks of Ops and Gynia and four weeks of Peds and then hopefully have a chance to explore after that. Um, thank you for coming in to see us today and if you want to find out any more about our summer health festival then just check out stcuthbits.com. Hi, I'm Jenny and I'm a physiotherapist. I first thought about a career in physio when I was 15 years old and I was studying for my GCSEs. So I had to get five A to C grade GCSEs in order to get on to do my A levels. And when I did my A levels, I did English, biology and PE and I had to get three Bs in order to get onto the university course. I then went to uni to do physio. So after the three years, I was then a qualified physiotherapist. When you start as a physio, you start on what we call a band five salary, which is £21,500 a year, incrementing yearly up to £27,500 a year. There is scope to progress. Obviously, you then have more responsibility, but the salary then does increase as well. So there are many different areas of physiotherapy that you can work in. As I mentioned, I work in a hospital, and even within the hospital, there are many different departments that you can work on. For example, you can work with children, or you can work with the elderly, you can work with people with neurological conditions, for example, following a stroke or a head injury. It's a very challenging job, and it can be very busy, but it is also very rewarding being able to help people with their personal goals and being able to get them back on their feet again. I personally can't imagine doing any other job and I feel that it was definitely worth all the hard work to get me to where I am today. Being a physiotherapist and being able to earn a good salary means that I'm able to achieve certain lifestyle. So for example, I'm able to own my own car. I'm also looking at you know buying a house soon. Um, I'm able to go on nice holidays and trips away with my family and friends. So if it is something that you're interested in, I definitely recommend looking into it, maybe even seeing if you can do a bit of work experience, perhaps in your local hospital. Um, but definitely, I would definitely recommend it as a career. Thank you for listening.
Hi, my name is Vicky. I am a community midwife based at Arrow Park Hospital on the Wirral. I have been qualified for 18 years now after completing a degree course at Chester University in 1998. It was a hard course as I had to combine practical experience as well as do my university work. This averaged a 37 and a half hour week where all my friends were out partying and enjoying university life. I was working shifts and fitting my university work around these. But it was so, such an enjoyable course and it was so worth it in the end when I achieved a 2-1 BA Honours degree in midwifery studies and I started my career at age 21 earning a salary of £21,000 a year. A full-time midwife works 37 and a half hours a week. These usually are 12 hour shifts and include nights, weekends, bank holidays and yes even Christmas and New Year as babies don't mind when they arrive. This sometimes means I can't always share these special events with my family but sharing special moments with other families makes it all worthwhile. My job now as a community midwife means that I work on average three days a week 8.30am till 5pm. This also includes weekends and I cover on calls where I can get called to anywhere on the Wirral, any time of the day or night, to home deliveries. My job is very varied and I never get bored. I love working with families before and after their babies arrive, when I'm in a, in a very privileged time to share a special moment in their lives and to give them health related advice to themselves and their whole families. A full time community midwife earns on average around about £36,000 a year after 10 years experience. Being a community midwife has given me the flexibility to combine working three days a week with bringing up my own family. Having a good income helps me to own my own home and to spend valuable time on holiday and enjoying days out with my family which is very precious to me. I've had holidays in New York and own a little touring caravan which me and my family love going off to, to spend special times together. I would recommend a career in midwifery as long as you are willing to work hard and, to, and, and that you enjoy spending time listening and talking to different people. I certainly wouldn't want to do anything else. I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm a junior doctor at Arrow Park Hospital. Um, Hi. Hi, I'm Damon. I'm one of the other um, junior doctors at Arrow Park. And um, we've been asked today to talk to you about um, becoming a doctor, um, what to what to do, what you need to do um, at school um, before getting into university. Um, so basically, GCSEs. Yeah. Um, try try um, concentrating on the on the sciencey stuff. Um, biology, yeah. obviously the main thing, um, and then for A levels is is the science subjects as well. So so I did whenever I was doing it, I did um, all the sciences, so chemistry, physics, biology, and and I did maths as well. Um, and I think I think for for medicine you need three A's, or I think now they've got an A star since we have done our A levels. So. Yeah. So it's a tough process, but it's, it's worth it in the end. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's the sciences, and and basically you need to, you need to do well in them and to get into university. It is quite competitive, um, but if you do well in, in, in your exams and score quite highly, um, you should you should easily get in. And the other thing as well, which is important, is lots of extracurricular activities. So I did DAV, um, and also to get involved in your sports teams music um, and also doing some work experience is really important so sort of message your local hospitals if you want to do it um, get involved family friends and things and then do a bit of work experience see if you actually like it and enjoy the subject that's important it's a, it's a long course it's a five-year course now um, so it's you need to enjoy it to, to do it yeah it is, it is long but it is um it is enjoyable um you get to you get to meet lots of people um lots you get you get to see the um 
you get to work closely with the other students um, and you get you get put into different groups initially um, and, and you work closely with them. Um, as, as a doctor it's, it's, it's quite nice you get to work with the other um, other specialties, other other disciplinaries um, such as the nurses and the OTs and the physios and pharmacists and um, so it's not just it's not just doctors that you work with um, yeah I think it's, um, it's it's great it's not it's not sort of a nine-to-five job obviously you're on call and things as well in the evenings weekends and night shifts um, so you, you know you have a whole range of things to do from your day job to then being on call looking after quite sick patients um, which is challenging but it's it's really good for your learning um, and uh, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a different job every day no, no job of the day is the same um, which is I think it's one of the, one of the perks the job um, keeps you interested it is it can it can be stressful at times I'm not gonna lie but um, don't be put off by that because um, you're always supported there's always somebody that's more senior above you that you can always turn to